and i think there is a clear need of some indigenous novel therapy so my talk is looks like a right in the right session so uh, thank you prashant for inviting me and giving this opportunity to talk about some of our work especially the karti uh, jadani in india uh, so i think with this audience i don't need to emphasize much that in india also we have we are ranked actually second in global cancer mortality rate and this part of the world which is so, so earlier thought that only infectious diseases are the most uh, important one i think cancer is on the rise and we have 65% of the total in fact global death burden is in our de developing country so we definitely need some curative platform uh, for uh, curing this uh, major disease right and car t is one of the curative pl platform right now these are all autologous uh, car t therapies available autologous means here the personalized medicine where we take out the patient t cells genetically modify them to fight against cancer and reinfuse them into the body and once they are reinfused they remain in the body for quite some time in the patient and that's the reason they provide long term cure so that's why they are also named living drug instead of multiple times we take chemo or immunotherapy this car t can be given once and it is done so that's why it is providing you long term uh, cure uh, you all know very well i don't need to reemphasize you all been uh, talking about chemotherapy immunotherapy they all have been extremely wonderful tools to help uh, reducing cancer burden but there is a new tool came uh, car t cell which is giving a good results at least in the lymphoma setting including the mental cell at dlbcl etc right one of the uh, very good example of emily whitehead she was a leukemia patient treated almost a decade ago and now even after 12 years she is cancer free and that's the word cure is i think they started using for first time at least i heard technically we never used to call cure we always said remission but now they started using the word cure for at least this girl uh, and there are so many good studies long term studies have now published which are showing that at least 40 to 50% range at least half of the patients who are treated with car t they are in the long term uh, event free survival we have noticed almost if the cancer doesn't relapse for 18 to 20 months most of the patients are under remission so looking like it's a very good uh, uh, modality for especially for leukemias and lymphomas and based on the many many now trials long term trial and many data available these uh, basically these uh, cd19 car t from four different companies kimra and novartis kite and juno they have now the us fda approval for commercial uses especially for mental cell lymphoma large b cell lymphomas dlbcl in adult and in some in pediatric settings as well and now we have for multiple myeloma the two products karma and cartitude these two trials were run and bluebird and uh, legend they have the product of abicma or carvi kit these are anti bcma carti for the multiple myeloma and based on these many many studies uh, now there is a paradigm shift that really the car t works better than the standard of care and maybe now they are the standard of care in many places another important i think uh, finding came when the car t actually approved many of you know these were approved for second or third line relapse or in the second or third line as a therapy but now they are moving up front in the treatment option so now you can probably prescribe the first line chemotherapy or that relapses within 12 months of first line uh, chemo immunotherapy the so basically just what i want to say is they are now uh, moving up front in the treatment and that's why more and more patients can be eligible for car t trial and can get benefit of this uh, particular therapy Uh, for this particular forum i think uh, car t in liquid tumor lymphoma is more important but this particular platform is now making way in solid tumor as well and even beyond oncology in solid tumor there's no approved product yet 
but in solid tumor like breast neuro and osteosarcomas there are so many good trials are happening with some encouraging results and they are not as encouraging as the liquid tumor but in some encouraging results we are seeing with this platform in solid tumor most interesting one i think is another beyond oncology where car t are now tried in the cardiac fibrosis that means heart attack another big problem of our, our country so this particular technology platform can be used now in many many diseases in oncology non-oncology and in including the cardiovascular disease all of you are very well aware that now cancer is a huge burden in our part of the world including in other low low, low and middle income countries which is called global south right and um, whether it's south america african continent or and our southeast asia like these are all global south However, while you all know that there are so many cancer patients, but these kind of novel therapies, so far 4,000 therapies are ongoing clinical trials in many, many countries, but none of them are available in this global south. All, everything is in global north. So, and the... I think, uh, and the last talk, Dr. Ranjit has, uh, I think, very nicely pointed out about the finances, like economy, like uh, many of our patients can't even afford these kind of novel tools. So to make them affordable and to make them accessible to our patients, we thought that we should develop indigenous CAR T in long back in 2013, December, when I joined IIT Bombay as a faculty member, almost not 10 years ago. At that time, uh, even the Novartis did did not have a uh, US FDA approved drug. We had, have so had faced like many challenges, which you all I think agree. I don't need to say all of them, but they have besides the challenges, I think the best way is to do collaboration and move forward, right? And in our country, especially, the biggest problem of I think lymphoma uh, is that the median survival is really less. So these patients don't have much time. And if we uh, so what we thought, uh, this is slide by Dr. Hasmuk Jain, he told me what happens after the lapse is exactly something like this, where if you think about de novo lymphoma patients at 100, 60 get cured and almost 15 percent patient will get refractory and 25 relapse out of them again they have options available where 20 will again respond and 20 would be refractory those who respond half of them will go to the stem cell bone marrow transplant a half will not go and in the in, they will not be eligible then again even in the those who goes with bone marrow transplant only four will be under remission six will relapse so basically we have approximately 40 percent patients who do not have the cure or who do not have other options and they ultimately die right so to solve this major problem which is india centric as well and um, we actually start up uh, hospital in mumbai dr gaurav nadula dr hasmuk along with the colleague from national cancer institute nci we collaborated and uh, try to develop this indigenous car t platform basically our idea was can we develop the technology we develop the new product so the car t we develop is a novel humanized anti-CD19 car, unlike the Novartis or the uh, 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 Kite uh, who have the Murine car, our car is a humanized car, so that has more human sequences. And we did a lot of uh, ex vivo uh, lab studies to show that these car T we can manufacture in the lab, they work in an antigen specific manner, they can kill the all CD19 positive T cells, they uh, once they see the tumor, they release a lot of interferon gamma, IL2, that means they're functional car T we can make in the lab. And these uh, car T, when we put in the animal model, so on the left hand side what you see these are the mouse which are bearing tumors so more the intensity bigger the tumor and on the right what you see the when the mice were giving these uh, anti cd19 car they the tumor was cleared and it so it shows that in the mouse model at least it shows efficacy and this data we uh, so we uh, just to summarize it i did not go in any of the detail of the work because it's already been published in this molecular cancer therapeutics journal journal and it's a humanized car just to summarize it is humanized car it's a lentiviral vector based gene delivery platform tested in vivo as well as ex vivo we got the patents and we were first in the clinic with this product. 
Right. But before we go to the clinic, you have to ensure that these cells are produced as per industry standard in a GMP environment. So you have to develop a manufacturing process uh, so, uh, which avoids all the contaminants and which is very transparent and which and the process should be traceable. So those are the GMP processes we developed in the lab. And before because these are going into the patient, there has to be very thorough quality control process around them because ultimately these cells will go into the human being. So the quality assays we do based on identity, purity, potency, and safety. Again, I'm not going to detail, but there's so many 20 to 30 assays which we perform before these cells go into the patient. And that's how these, once we have done all this, uh, we these cells undergo into the patient. And here, I will show you some data of our phase one trials as well as some phase two trials which we have been doing. So this first trial was done in the lymphoma with Dr. Hasmukh Jain. Uh, 10 patients uh, we had with the lymphoma and PMBCL. They use ISCOLA-1 criteria. Duration is 10 years. And uh, Dr. Hasmukh was the PI and his sponsor is Tata Hospital and research support was given by Immunoact and ICMR. So uh, this trial, some of you know that uh, we have run over the COVID time. So we had so many challenges we faced and all of you will agree that these patients don't have much time because this can uh, disease uh, progress fast. So timing was a uh, very crucial factor and regulatory bodies, they have only given us permission for sequential enrollment. That means then first patient we treat and first patient is discharged safely, we could only enroll second patient then. And that caused a lot of delays and many patients we couldn't uh, take up even after the enrollment. So this chart basically showed 40 patients in screen and uh, there were a lot of screen failures. Finally, 14 patients were enrolled and 14 uh, then uh, there are two even withdraw prior to leukapheresis. And those who underwent leukapheresis, we could only infuse 10 patients because two deteriorated very fast and one died because of COVID. And out of those 10, uh, four is death now because of three disease progression. One is because of pneumonia and other six are on follow-up and I will show you the uh, their data. So these were the 10 patients, uh, mainly the male as well as female. The majority seven was the DLBCL, the relapsing of the factory DLBCL, and uh, remaining were PMBCL. Uh, these patients have undergone many, many prior therapies, failed prior therapies from one to six all the way. So many have failed many, many therapies. The uh, noted, uh, which point to be noted is majority had the bulky disease. Few also, Only very few has non-bulky disease. Uh, at the time of enrollment, the, most of them are stage four, except uh, patient number ID number 11. And they all had extranodal disease. Uh, basic characteristics, uh, there were eight male, two female. ECOG status uh, uh, was one in nine patients, 90% uh, diagnostic was seven DLBCL, three PMBCL, seven had bulky disease, only three did not have bulky disease and prior lines of therapies were uh, here uh, as noted. So uh, what we have done uh, was that we manufacture the cells and what you will notice here from apheresis, once we collect the cells, within eight days, we manufacture the cells for these patients. So very short manufacturing time. And then we infuse them in a split dose. So that first day we give only 10% of the CAR T, second day we give 30% and third day we give 60%. Uh, and this was in the only phase one to avoid the uh, toxicity. But I can tell you that you can give simply the full dose without any toxicity issues. Now, uh, so if our CAR T we could manufacture from all 10 patients and we made enough number of cells and they were good quality cells because they had some naive central memory, effector memory, all these cells. Uh, so the product was good product, make good mix of naive and effector and terminal because these cells are important. Some are important for immediate effects, some are important for persistence because they can they have different proliferation abilities so uh, now i think once these cells are given to the patient and then we check the safety because phase one the main criteria is safety so on the left what you see is the car t dose so this is 
two times 10 to the six per gig. So two million per gig, or we gave as high as 17 million cells per kilogram body weight, which is a very, very high number. What you can uh, see and appreciate, none of these patients developed the severe eye cancer, neurotoxicity, which is a major, major com concern, which take the patient to the ICU for a long time, and which is another major reason for financial toxicity. So our patient did not go to the atelic lymphoma once, did not go to ICU after the this CAR T. So basically now we feel it's like an OPD kind of setting. You can start giving CAR T. Uh, somewhere in US, they started that, but not in India. We are not ready yet. But uh, I think the long term would be that can CAR T be given OPD kind of setting. Many of these patients uh, uh, only develop grade one or grade two CRS. Uh, and uh, the major, I think you can say the CVS CRS was not there, grade three or grade four, so no fatality happened. How about efficacy? Uh, efficacy was, uh, now you can see this particular patient, ID10. Uh, here you can see a clear big mass of the tumor, and then on day 30, it was completely gone. So this was what first CR we had. Another complete response, you can, uh, another, you all are, I think, lymphoma ex ex specialist, you can see clearly a lot of disease here, high disease burden, and it was completely gone on the day 30. The fourth patient uh, also, unfortunately, we lost him. Uh, he had a very big disease burden, little bit left, almost I think, four or five percent disease left, but we couldn't cure him. And ultimately, disease relapsed and we lost. So if we summarize our phase one efficacy data, on the y-axis, these are the different patient IDs. And on the x-axis, you have the days, number of days. And the day zero was a day of CAR-T infusion. So uh, on the uh, negative axis, uh, x-axis, what you see is that time from the enrollment till the infusion. So because of COVID, this ID3, which I was talking, uh, we he took almost like five months to in infuse the CAR T because sometimes we did not have hospital availability. Sometimes he got COVID. So ultimately, disease, I think, progressed a lot. By the time we infuse the cells, I think within 30, 40 days, we lost. Okay. And uh, similarly, uh, like uh, other patients, we could infuse on time within, I think, 30 days uh, on average, we could infuse the CAR T. And what see, you see in the green, green is complete response. Uh, CR and I think the pink is a uh, progressive disease and the uh, uh, sky blue or light blue you have the stable disease so uh, what we had a total overall if you see total five complete responses what we have and the doses if we have greater than five million cells per kilogram body weight you have almost four CR out of six patient who got this dose and another four uh, only in one and we saw the CR even that too after nivolumab. Another good thing uh, I think uh, Dr. Agarwal sir was mentioning nivolumab in the lymphoma a uh, little bit he touched upon. What you see here there was one patient where we did not see I think this was the patient ID number five where we got uh, gave them nivolumab because uh, he was always showing uh, even day 270 he showed uh, on the pat scan so the uh, uh, the diamond uh, is uh, pat scan time uh, he always showed progressive disease but when we see the car in the blood he had a lot of car t in the car expression in the blood which was uh, we were unable to understand why because generally what happens is when you don't have CAR T, CAR T goes to almost zero, disease progress because many patients CAR T don't proliferate, don't persist. But in this particular patient, there were CAR T in the blood, but he would still have progressive disease. So we thought, is our CAR T not working? So uh, I think uh, Dr. Hasmuk decided to give probably nivolumab and suddenly uh, nivolumab and then the patient underwent uh, CR. So, and the CAR T again and went high and the patient ultimately went into CR. Many cases, we, of course, it was in this patient, it was, we were lucky. Another patient, ID 14, again, this patient also received the uh, 
the nivolumab, but he also received the V-infusion because the uh, number of cells were not high, high enough. So we gave him the V-infusion of the CAR T and he's continued to be the uh, CR. So overall, what you see is the deep responses. If you see three out of six uh, are under deep responses and as high as more than a year now. So some patients are almost a year uh, uh, CR and the CR. These CAR T persist enough. Uh, I think more than 100 days. We have the data now. They are in the blood. You can find them and because they, these cells have ability to persist long. And so in the whether CD3 or generally in the responders, they persist. Uh, you can see very good proliferation. Non-responder, you don't see the good proliferation, which is, I think, similar to what uh, other people also have reported. So overall, if you see phase one primary objective, which was safety, there were no treatment related death. Cytokine release syndrome was grade one or grade two. We did not have any ICU admission in our lymphoma trial. Toxicities are manageable. Second trial was done by the Dr. Gaurav Narula and Dr. Uh, Naveen Khatri and their team. This was a pediatric ALL trial. Here they skimmed 34 patients, enrolled nine, and ultimately infused six patients in the uh, two different doses. One dose, first three patients were almost a million, and second dose were three to five million cells uh, per gig in the pediatric population. So at diagnosis, if you see patient characteristics, the one is to one male and female ratio, four patients, they have high risk genetic profile, the pH um, positive. And earlier they have the CNS involvement, but at the time of enrollment, the CSF negative, that was the criteria. And what you see as a dose and toxicities responses, uh, there was only, six uh, like all six had grade one crs like uh, and then um, in one patient grade one converted grade two in a few days and so only one grade two and one patient also had grade three and icans so in leukemia in one patient we have seen a difficult crs as well as difficult neurotoxicity and respond and ultimately that patient we lost uh, the, and uh, this was uh, C, uh, so if you see overall result uh, out of six patients, three are CR uh, complete response MRD negative uh, and two are MRD positive and uh, one patient did not. So overall response was 83% and two patients are still under deep remission. Right? And now, currently, we are running phase two trial. Uh, this is ImmunoAct sponsored phase two trial. Our target enrollment is 50. And this uh, trial includes all the adults, patient, and the young adult with all majority of the B cell malignancy, including lymphoma and leukemia. So far, we have almost now enrolled 11 patients within the last two months. And uh, uh, here, uh, the vein to vein time is only uh, 27 days. So till from apheresis to the uh, infusion, now we are I think, mature enough to do things a little quicker. And we don't have any regulatory uh, disadvantage as well, because now they allowed us uh, to enroll multiple patients at the same time. And manufacturing is also now reduced to nine days only. So overall, uh, what well, the key conclusion of well, this talk is that indigenous CAR T platform, the clinical stage from right from uh, design in India, manufacturing in India, an entire platform is indigenous. And we have taken this platform, not from the, just from the lab, all the way to the clinic now phase two is happening and uh, we hope that with the help of immunoact we can make it affordable and it can ensure the access to all who might benefit from these therapies and i would like to now thank to all the mentors who mentored us in this entire journey all the regulators funding agencies and most importantly to our patients who put their hopes and trust on us Right, and entire team of IIT Bombay, all the students, Immunoact team who is translating the project, 
Tata Hospital in Dr. Garo sir, Dr. Hasmuk and entire their team who is working tirelessly and the backbone of this project and uh, Dr. Terry Fry, Steve Heifel and Nirali, their constant support for all the translational work which we are doing. Carl June and Avery Posey who are the pioneer who are for the Novartis and uh, they, they are the innovator of this product and they are in fact in our scientific advisory board of the Immuno Act and very much want that India should have the own car t program similarly dr satwa nilapu who ran the jilia trial a kite trial for the cd19 cd28 he is also helping us he wants india to have its own car t as soon as possible because i think involvement of india will make the car t mainstream and many many patients can get benefit okay so with this i thank you all for listening in case you have questions i will be happy to answer sir uh, how many times can we transfuse this car t cells and uh, when when do we assess the response? So Professor Purva, he is asking yeah. how many times we can give an infusion. Yeah. So generally, it is done only once. But uh, because these are humanized car, if there is a need to reinfuse the car T, if the response is not good, we can reinfuse them. And we have seen the in few of our patients that we have reinfused them without any uh, problem. Uh, generally, what happens, I think, where this question is very relevant is that in the murine CAR T, when the first time they are given, our body uh, generates some kind of anti murine immune responses. So, when you give second time, the, our body rejects the CAR T. In our case, we are hoping we are having partial humanization. There's, therefore, there will be less immunogenicity. So, when you uh, reinfuse the cells, they will be uh, received by the body and they will not be rejected. And therefore, you may see a better response. And your second, I think, question of when you assess the dose response, correct? And so, day 30 is uh, something what we assess the response in lymphoma. So, first pet we do in the day 30, and then the day 90, I think, is the best uh, response you observe. So, do we have any, any more question? We can have one more question. Yeah, please. Hello, sir. Uh, did you include a retrovirus positive patient in that also? No, uh, no, no. So, we are using a lentiviral vector, not retroviruses. And uh, I don't know if we have included retrovirus positive patients. So, uh, he, have we included? He's asking, have we included retroviral positive patients? Uh, in the study, be HIV positive, etc. Yeah. Yes. No, we haven't. Yeah. That's an exclusion criteria. Bro. That's it. So, uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, Rahul, uh, like, yes, yeah. Dr. Rahul, excellent talk. My question is regarding your strategy of aliquoting the uh, CAR T cell. Now, I've said 20 million cell. How do you aliquot them so that you can infuse in future? And how much, how do you decide that this much product will go in the first go? Yeah. So we fractionated as a 10%, 30%, and 60% based on the pace. Uh, so if we decided, like uh, right now, our dose is a little flexible, we say greater than 5 million cells per kilogram, and I think capped as 15 million per kick. So if we are getting 10 million cells per kilogram body weight and that 10 million per kilogram, we just divide in three fractions. One fraction would have 10%, another 30% and a third one would be 60%. So this is not a fixed dosing, but it's a flexible dosing up from greater than 5 million till 15 million per gig. Do, do you uh, like, you know, when we do allogenic also we keep one product say for a future transplant future infusion so for example if you have say 15 million do you do it such a way that 5 million we will preserve cryo preserve for say next six months after in case patient relapses and 10 million we are going to go in this uh short mm -hmm. 10 20 and 30 percent the way you described yeah good question so what we are doing at this moment is that we are cryo preserving the aphoresis product and we only make car -T up to the 15 million per kg according to that dose, greater than 5 million to 15. Remaining FRSS product we cryopreserve. So in case there is a reinfusion need in future, in few patients, we can uh, just uh, thaw the FRSS product and make the fresh CAR T for the next time. An excellent talk, sir. 
so regarding one of your patient had a, a poor response and followed by pdl1 inhibitor the cd the cart cells pick, uh, disease went into remission so first question is what could be the reason behind that and should we include that as a protocol or uh, should we give uh, a pdl1 inhibitor after cart yeah excellent question so our trial is very small trial right now so we can't make any big conclusion out of it because our number is only hardly and the phase one is 10 and then uh, like another 10 we have done uh, in the 10 patients only two were treated with the pdl1 so again numbers are too small to make any conclusion but what we have seen as a science in at least in the first patient was that when we gave the car uh, nivolumab car t number increases and patient underwent remission so although this patient earlier had car but they were not working so something related to tumor microenvironment where something happened and the break was out and then car t was already there and car t further expanded and killed the tumor again these are hypotheses these are just like with the one or two patients are hypothesis tumor microenvironment or the further uh, CAR-T expansion. So your question is being tested and this, you know, this is, this will carry on. And I think with so many different drugs, the PDL one, PDL one switch can be activated. And one of those, I can just tell you, it is many to plaques, but there is, there are many, more. but this is just one part of it. The story is one question. That's the last question. Yeah. Thanks. Also a question actually about the maintenance strategy. Also, sir, another basic question about the trial. Uh, was the lymphodepleting chemotherapy uh, similar between the two trials or was there a difference in uh, treating patients with ALL versus uh, the large B-cell lymphomas? I think both the trial had flu sci. Uh, I think uh, lymphoma, I am for sure. Our first few patients, we were giving, I think, fludarvin for two days and then uh, three days fludarvin and cyclophosphamide only for two days. But then we are advised that both of the flu size would be in three, three days. And then we started actually seeing the responses. So lymphodepletion really matters and how you do lymphodepletion also matters. But in leukemia trial, I'm not 100% sure. But I think it mainly the same. Thank you, sir. Just to add, the regimen was same in both. And the two patients that they responded to PDL one they are also PMBCLs, you know, and PMBCLs do respond to immunotherapy. But we did see that expansion of CAR T as Dr. Rahul has told. So this is something which is exciting, but as uh, we have seen that in all or none that all PDL, we should give, start giving PDL1 to all CAR T. So. Thank you, Dr. Lingiraj. I didn't Thank you. <laughs>